Rodney Dangerfield was a, a comedian, you know, especially in the, the 80s and 90s, that was known for his self-deprecating humor, and, and he had a, a famous line. Uh, does anyone know what that famous line was from Rodney Dangerfield? Uh, I, I don't get no respect. That's right. He, he got a lot of laughs out of it in, in the 80s and 90s. It became um, you know, a line that, that he used often. Now, even though Rodney Dangerfield got a lot of laughs with his line, I don't get no respect, it seems that we're now living in a day where there is so much disrespect, there's so little respect that it, it's no longer a, a laughing matter. Whether it be educators, police officers, politicians, uh, journalists, religious leaders, students, minorities, uh, the list could go on and on of those who, who experience disrespect in the day in, in which we live. Now, there's always the possibility that, uh, that someone who feels disrespected could have a, a woe is me complex and, and you know, always uh, feeling like pe people are picking on them. But there's, there's a lot of disrespect that happens in, in our culture. It's very prevalent. Whether it's disrespect for the flag, disrespect for institution, disrespect for oneself, or, or disrespect uh, for other people. We live in a world that seems to have lost the common decency of, of respecting uh, other people and respecting different ideas. You know, as followers of Jesus, we are, we are ones who um, are called to, to seek to restore some civility in, in the culture in, in which, which we live. You know, what can we do to, to nurture respect in, in relationships? Well, as we begin a, a new series this morning, we're calling it R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Rick, could you come up with a song that maybe... <laughs> well, I won't sing it, but I thought maybe you could come up with a song that would, would fit. But uh, maybe sometime this, this month, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can find a, a song that, that fits that. You know... I believe that uh, you know, as we think about you know, the, the, the topic of respect, you know, where, where can we start in, in making a difference in, in respect? And I believe that the place that we can, can make a start in, in making a difference about respect in our culture is we can begin by looking in the mirror. It's not about demanding respect, but, but it's earning respect. It's not simply about experiencing respect, but it's showing respect. I believe that one of the most basic teachings in, in Scripture that gets at this topic of, of respect can be found in, in the Sermon on the Mount. You know, in, in Matthew chapter 7, a, a verse that's often referred to as, as the golden rule. You know, in Matthew 7 verse 12, Jesus said, So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. You know, this idea of, of doing to others as you would have them do unto you kind of summarizes, if we would do that, we would be getting at the basics of the, the law and the prophets. We'd be getting at the, at the basics of, of the teachings of, of Scripture. So how is it that you would like others to, to treat you? You know, I believe most of us would like to be treated with, with respect. Uh, we would like others to treat us with some sense of, of dignity, recognizing that we have some sort of worth and, and, and value in, in this world. I believe that we want to be treated with, with kindness. You know, none of us like to, to be treated unkindly. None of us like to be treated in, in a rude or, or cruel way. I think all of us want to be treated fairly. You know, it's an issue that, um, you know, we don't want to be taken advantage of. You know, when Jesus teaches us to, to do unto others what you would have them do to you, he's telling us that every single person who crosses our path is someone that, um, that we should in, in some way treat with, with respect. 
Now, we have different relationships with, with different people in, in terms of levels of, of closeness, uh, levels of, of familiarity, but it doesn't matter how well we know someone or don't know someone. You know, our call is still to treat them with respect. Jesus said that we aren't to, to treat other people the, the way they treat us. He tells us that we're to treat other people uh, as we would want to be treated, regardless of how they treat us. You know, often we, we feel permission to, uh, to respond to someone with, in some way with, that's less than respectful based upon their response to us. But as Jesus calls us to, to treat others as we would have them treat, treat us, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, you know, it's an issue that we are to, to respond to them with respect no matter how it is that they've treated us. Jesus says that if we do this, it, it could change the world. Jesus acknowledges that it's easy to love someone who loves you back. It's easy to, to be nice to someone who is nice to you. It's easier to respect someone who shows you respect. But the other person's response does not determine how we're to treat them. Uh, let me state that a little bit differently. The other person's response often influences how we respond to them. But we are to respond with respect no matter how they respond to us. You know, we should treat them with respect and dignity and kindness, and we should treat them fairly. Uh, treating another person with respect is holding that person in high regard, no matter who they are. Holding them in high regard and, and treating them uh, accordingly. Respect is valuing people and then treating them a as valuable. As I've been thinking about this series for, for several weeks now, you know, God has, has challenged me on, on several occasions. When I've been frustrated with, with a situation and and maybe I haven't responded in, in the most respectful way. Um, you know, the, the Holy Spirit has kind of nudged my spirit or, or brought a, a thought to mind. And, and, uh, and, and actually, it's come in the form of a question. And that is, after an interaction with someone, you know, the, the Holy Spirit would prompt me with, with the question, did you act respectful? I must confess that uh, in the last few weeks, when whenever the Holy Spirit has prompted me with that question, did you just act respectful in that encounter? The reason that I was being prompted by the Holy Spirit was because the answer was always no. You know, when I wasn't being respectful, the, the Spirit was kind of checking my spirit and saying, you know, that's not the way that, um, that uh, Jesus wants us to, to respond as, as his followers. If you haven't sensed the, the Holy Spirit maybe beginning to, to challenge you as, as you think about your, uh, your own treatment of other people or, or your, you know, the way you treat others with respect or, or disrespect, I want you to consider this. You know, the book of Genesis tells us that as human beings, we are created in God's image. When God created Adam and Eve, when he created the human race, it says that we are created in God's image. It doesn't say that we're God, but there's something about each and every one of us that reflects God's image. So even that person that crosses your path, that causes you some challenge, uh, that causes you to, um, uh, to be frustrated, even that person has something of the reflection of the image of God in them. You know, and you are to treat them with, uh, with respect. Every single person that, that you greet, you know, every person that, that you encounter, that is a person for whom Jesus died upon the cross and, and gave his life for them. You know, the, the worst person you know the person that's the most vulgar, that's the most bitter, that's the most obnoxious, that's the most cold-hearted, that, that's the most despicable person you know. Whoever that may be, they are only one prayer away 
for, for making a decision to, to be a follower of Christ and, and uh, to become your brother or, or sister in Christ. You know, how you respond to people as you are Christ represented in the world, you know, could have eternal consequences. Eternal consequences could, could be in, in the balance. You know, I don't want to be a stumbling block for anyone to be a follower of Christ because I've treated them in, a, in an unkind way, in a, in a disrespectful way. Uh, res respectful people discipline themselves to, to believe the, the best uh, about others. You know, in, in the love chapter, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I, I like the way the, the message says it. It says, love always looks for the best in others. When we're living out unconditional love that, uh, that the Bible teaches us to, 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 to follow, whenever we're living out unconditional love. We're always looking for, for the best in others. We're always thinking the, the best of others. And, and when we do, when we think the, the best of others, it's also easier for us to, to treat them with respect. During the, the next five, um, five weeks, the, this week and, and the next five, we're going to consider the, the topic of respect from several different angles. And I want us to, to look at the, the word respect R-E-S-P-E-C-T. And, and as we look at that word, I want, us, want it to remind us of several of the, of the, the facets of, of respect and, and ways that we can, uh, can live that out and, and be more respectful people. We can invest in, in practices that are going to cause us to, to be strengthened in, in this area of respect, and, and it's going to be an influence our, our experience and, and experience our relationships with, with others. You know, first and foremost, I believe respect involves relationships. Relationships are strengthened and indivi as individuals have uh, respect for one another. Well, when we lack respect for one another, it's easier to demonize. It's easier to, to, uh, uh, to cut down. You know, it's easier to, to attack. You know, in our culture, in, in the current climate of, of our culture, demonizing sells books. Demonizing causes us to, uh, to, to watch the, the news or, or programs on, on cable TV. Demonizing causes us to, uh, to buy a, a newspaper. You know, demonizing may cause ratings to, to go up. But it doesn't do anything for solving the world's differences and making the world a, a better place. We need to, to be in relationship with those whom we disagree so that we can understand where they're coming from a, a little bit better. The result of, of dialogue can be better understanding and can heal um, and, and can help us to, to bridge our, our differences. Now, Respect also involves ego. Now, ego has to do with self-esteem, self-importance, self-worth, self-respect. If you don't have a, a healthy ego, if you don't have a healthy view of yourself, then, then you're also probably going to, uh, to treat others with, with disrespect. You're not going to have a, a good view of others. It, it's been said that... Um, hurting people hurt people. You know, if, if we don't have a, a healthy view of our, ourselves, if we don't have a healthy self-ego, then we're also liable to, uh, to seek to hurt other people as we try to feel better about ourselves. You know, the golden rule says treat others like you want to be treated. If you're overly critical of yourself, chances are you're probably also overly critical of, of others. Now, there's another aspect of, of ego. On, on the one hand, there are people that don't have uh, self-respect, and, and that affects how they, how they relate to others. But there are also people who think too highly of themselves. And in thinking too highly of themselves, they also can be super critical of, of others. And so there, there's a, a part of having a healthy ego that, that we, we need to, to be humble, you know, the, 
approach relationships, re- approach others with, with some humility. You know, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, ego and, and self-respect uh, next week. You know, respect involves slow responses. Now, we nurture respect in relationships as we have slow responses, such as being slow to speak and slow to anger. You know, in uh, James 1.19, James encourages his readers that everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. You know, relationships are, are strengthened, and respect is shown whenever we are, um, are, are slow to speak. You know, so often we, we want to get, uh, get our two cents worth in, but, but at first we really seek to listen. What is that other person saying? Where is it that that other person's coming from? You know, and, and in order to really listen to that, to that other person, we need to be slow to speak and, and also slow to anger. You know, so often we may hear someone say something that, that strikes us wrong, and, and instead of trying to understand where it is that they're coming from, uh, we lash, lash out in anger and, and try to, to, to shut them down. On several occasions in Scripture, God is described as being slow to anger. It also notes that uh, if God were not slow to anger, we wouldn't have a chance. If God were not slow to anger, then, then he, he would wipe us out. But it, it's because God is slow to anger that he, he is patient with us and, and shows us grace. And likewise, we should do the, the same in, in um, being, being slow to anger in our relationship with, with others. You know, the power of respect, the, the lack of respect or, or, or disrespect is often promoted by a sense of power. So the, the lack of, of respect or disrespect is often promoted by a, a sense of power or domination over another person. In recent months, we've heard a lot about uh, sexual harassment. Sexual harassment uh, among the, the rich and famous. You know, sexual harassment in the workplace, sexual harassment in the halls of Congress, sexual harassment in, in our judicial system. You know, recently I, I read a, a story from a, from a general agency in the United Methodist Church that, that they've been getting a, a lot, lot more calls about people talking to them about their experiences of, of sexual harassment even in the church. Now, you know, we don't want to think that it, it, it's there, but in all facets of, um, of the world in which we live, you know, none of us are are exempt from the, the possibility of, of experiencing harassment. You know, when, um, when one person exerts power over another, you know, it could be sexual harassment, but, but even bullying is a, is, a type of, is a type of harassment. You know, in terms of taking advantage of, of someone else, when, when someone takes their position of power um, and takes advantage of another person, it's... It's disrespect. It's a, it's a type of, of harassment. You know, harassment is a manifestation of, of disrespect for, toward another person. If uh, respect was, was being practiced in a relationship, then there would be no concern of, um, of, of experiencing harassment or, or any sort of abuse. Because when we show respect to, to one another, it, it, it elevates that, that relationship and, and um, you know, the, there's nothing that, that's harmful in, in showing respect. You know, R is, R is relationships, E is ego, S is slow responses, P is power. The, the next E, you know, reminds us that respect is earned. When examining the Bible uh, about what it has to, to say about respect, one of the recurring themes is that it talks about we can do things in our lives to earn respect. You know, in Proverbs, we're, we're told to be kind-hearted. It, it says that a kind-hearted woman gains respect. In 1 Thessalonians, it tells us to lead a, a quiet life. Mind your own business and work hard. And if you do those three things, lead a quiet life, um, you'll mind your own business and work hard, 
then it says that when you do those, you are going to gain the respect of others. You can't control the, the, the attitudes or, or responses of others, but you can conduct yourself in such a way that you're giving them no reason to dislike or, or disrespect you. You know, the C represents compromise. You know, whenever we're in relationships that involve differences or conf um, conflicts, we must be, be willing to compromise. Now, that doesn't mean that, that we need to, to give up our core beliefs. It doesn't mean that we have to give up our, our convictions. But, but in that issue of, of compromise, it's, it's really understanding where the other person is, is coming from. You know, one of the things that I've read about it in terms of a, a strategy for conflict resolution is that when two people are in conflict is to make each of them have such an understanding of where the other person's coming from that they could take the other person's side in the argument. It doesn't mean that uh, they have to change their position, but if they understand where the other person is coming from so well that, that they could argue the other person's side, it helps them to have better understanding. It helps them to, to have uh, more respect for, for one another. You know, the final letter of, of respect is, is T, which stands for, for trustworthiness. You know, in order to win the respect of others, you must prove yourself to be a man or a woman of your word. You need to be truthful. You need to be trustworthy. Uh, Jesus stated in the, in the Sermon on the Mount, he, he said it simply, let your yes be yes and your no be no. If you say you're going to do something, do it. If you say you're not going to do something, then don't do it. Uh, when you live with integrity, you gain the respect of others. As I said earlier, next week we're going to, to talk about the, uh, the topic of, of self-respect. In two weeks we're going to talk about um, how to have difficult discussions without demonizing the, the other person. Then we're going to have a panel discussion that we're, we're going to talk about uh, harassment and, and how we should respond as a victim and also how we should respond if, uh, if we see someone else who, who's being harassed. In February, we're going to talk about uh, race relations, and, um, and then we'll wrap up the series on the, the second Sunday of, of February as we talk about I integrity, living as truthful and, and trustworthy people. You know, we live in a world that is filled with disrespect, but as followers of, of Jesus, we are called to to, to live differently from the world around us. We're, we're called to, to be set aside for God's purposes. One of the ways that, uh, that Jesus' character is reflected in our lives is as we treat others with respect. Are you up for, for that challenge? Are you ready to, are you willing to treat other people in the days ahead with greater respect than you have in, in the days that have passed. Let us pray together. Lord, as your people, you have, have called us to, to treat one another with respect. And, and we confess that that's not always easy. But I pray that you would help us to, um, to treat others not, uh, not according to the way that they respond to us, but may you help us to respond to others in, in a way that is always reflecting the character of Jesus. Lord, may you help us to, to respect others even when it's difficult. May you help us to respect others even when we feel like we need to bite our tongue. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen.